Hello and welcome everyone back to Black Who Ministries, where we are Bible lovers, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I'm joined here once again with my faithful student, Sister Lasagna. Sister Lasagna, God bless you. And how are you on this day? I am fabulous. What a wonderful day it is to study about our Lord. Oh, isn't it? It is so good, isn't it? Even with the temperatures approaching 100 degrees, we can still say this is the day the Lord has made. And we're going to what? Rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Well, Sister Lasagna, God bless as you know, and those that's been following along with us. We are doing a wonderful, wonderful series this year where we've been talking about couples in my Bible. And we are already on episode number 28. And for many of you, uh, we have a series and it's 42 lessons in the series. So again, this is number 28. You don't want to miss any of these lessons with Sister Lasagna and I. Well, today's couple, we're going to be looking at faith and love. And as you can see, the images that we have chosen uh, this week, a uh, lesson, uh, there is no uh, face, uh, there is no, uh, uh, you know, legs or arm. You can't put this to, a, 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 to something that's tangible because faith and love, we're going to be learning. Those are what? Spirits. These are yeah. spirits. And we're going to be looking to see is, uh, is this couple usual or unusual? <laughs> but before we get into the teachings, as we always do, we're going to have Sister Lasagna. She is going to uh, open us up in prayer. Sister Lasagna, welcome in. God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Ghost, who is our comforter. And we do know all three are going to open up everyone that's watching this our eyes and our hearts and our spirits to receive what thus says the Lord in these scriptures. Sister Lasagna, open us up in prayer, please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Heavenly Father, we're just coming to you on this beautiful day, Lord Jesus, giving you thanks, honor, and praise. We love you today, Lord Jesus, because you know, we know that you sent your son down here to die for us, to redeem us from our sins, Lord Jesus. And we are just so thankful and grateful for all your help, your almighty power, what you have given us, what you have taken away. And we know that you are a just God. You only take from those who do not believe. If I believe in you, Lord, there are so many promises. And we just want to thank you for all those promises, all the guidance that you gave us, Lord Jesus. We have something to go by, which is the word of the, the living God. We know that you are living. You live in our hearts, Lord Jesus. You come out whenever you please. I invite you and you come. All I have to do is just give you an invitation. And Lord, you are there. We just thank you for be here today, Lord Jesus, in our lesson, your son and the Holy Spirit. We offer you to come and teach us and give us all the grace and mercy, Lord Jesus. We love you, we honor you, and we praise you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. Ooh, amen and amen. Now, ain't that a way to open up in prayer to give God the attention that he deserves from us to let him know just what's in our hearts. So thank you so much, Sister Lasagna, for that uh, beautiful prayer. And I like what you said, Jesus, he died. He came and died for our sins and for what? Give us what? Redemption. So that's why we do what we do. So again, God bless you and thank you for that. All right then, everyone. So we're going to get back to our lesson here today. And as we always do, what we like to do is we, we want to investigate, so to speak. We want to know what you know about this couple. Because, you know, even in 
regular couples because these couples that we're looking at in this series, they're not your average everyday couples like, uh, you know, like Sonny and Cher was or, you know, uh, Joe Biden and his wife and, you know, uh, and anyone, uh, Denzel Washington and his wife. Pick any couple on this planet, but these aren't the kind of couples we're looking at in this series. So we, you ought to know even something about these unorthodox type of couples we're looking at. So let's start, uh, Sister Lasagna, and share with us. We're going to take a look at faith and love because those are going to be the two key words in the teachings today. So let's start with faith. Sister Lasagna, if you had to describe for us uh, that are watching uh, what do you know about faith? What is that to you, faith? Faith is the assurance of the things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen, belief and trust in the loyalty of God. Complete trust or confidence in someone or something. Mm -hmm. That's good. And what about love? How would you describe love? Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but it rejoices with the faith. All right, then. Praise the Lord. So, Sister Lasagna, based on what you just described for us, what you know about faith and what you just talked about love, would you say this is a usual or unusual couple? It is definitely usual. Yes. Mm -hmm. They go together. They do, yes. don't they? They really do. And yes. so, you know, I always like to look at uh, two sides of the spectrum. You know, because when we look at faith and love, right away, we're thinking of God's faith and love, don't we? Because you even quoted uh, 1 Corinthians 13 when you talked about love. So even with faith as being a substance, I believe you came out of Hebrews on that. So when we look at that faith and love, when we look at God's faith and love, yeah, that's usual, isn't it? Because faith, yeah. uh, the scripture says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Well, if that's faith and it's the substance of things hoped for, because I'm hoping to hear the word of God, right? So now mm -hmm. if I got this faith and I'm trusting in it, not only do I need to trust in, in God's faith, but I got to what? Love it too. They go together. Do you love yeah. this faith? Do you love hearing the word of God? Do you love that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen? Do you love that? But guess what? If you do, if your love and your faith is in something that's that's right, then that's usual. But guess what? Yeah. The devil also got people that got faith in him. You got the devil that got people that has faith in the devil's work. They even love the devil's work. So when you look at that other side, the enemy side, that faith and love to me is what? Unusual. You should not have no faith and love in God's enemy. That faith and love needs to be directed to the Lord God. See? Because mm -hmm. it's usual. But if you're mm -hmm. spending more time with the enemy and you're loving the things of the world and what the enemy is doing and got your lying and stealing and corrupt and all of that, if you loving that and you got faith in that, well, then don't get mad when you get the rewards, when you end up with the rewards of what you love mm -hmm. and what you got faith in. So with mm -hmm. that being said, Sister Lasagna, now we got an understanding of what who this couple is. Let's get into some scriptures and we're going to be looking for the key words, faith and love. But then the next thing I want everyone uh, to look for is who's talking about this couple and, and what are they saying about faith and love? Is it usual or is it unusual? Let's take a look at the very first scripture. Let's go over to Deuteronomy chapter seven. And Sister Lasagna, can you read for us verse 9? 
I sure can. Mm -hmm. And it reads, therefore, know that the Lord, your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love him and mm -hmm. keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. And I wrote about Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy. These discourses reviewed the history of the Israelites up to the time repeated and expanded upon the laws that God had given and listed the promised blessings for obedience and cursings for disobedience. Moses was addressing the children of Israel only two months before they would cross the Jordan into Canaan, Deuteronomy 1, 3, and Joshua 4, 19. As it relates to chapter 7, he tells our God, tells us our God is God. We learn our God is a sovereign and faithful, also steadfast in his love, keeping the com covenant with our forefathers for thousands of generations. That's all I have. All right. Praise God. Well, you have more than enough, and that is great, Sister Lasagna. Thank you for giving us that little history nugget on Deuteronomy and it's a, a, in relation ship with Moses. So we know we're in the wilderness, don't we? Now, yeah. I'm telling you, when you're in a wilderness situation and you look around, look, there ain't no beautiful buildings. It ain't no stores. It ain't no orchards. You ain't got this. You ain't got that. You know, you be like, what, 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 what is going to happen to us? You going to need some what? Faith. And, yes. And yeah. Come on now. And see, the thing is, what I love about what Moses is sharing with us here in this text. Take a look at verse nine. Notice what he's telling the people that's going to get them into the promised land. You're going to have to do something. If you're going to trust God and walk with God, you going to have to do this because God is going to do what he's going to do. Look what it says. Know, therefore, that the Lord thy God, he is God, the what? Faithful, faithful, oh God, there's that key word. There's yeah. that word faithful. And it's saying that God is the one faithful. It didn't say Satan. Remember what we said earlier. If you're going to be faithful to someone, you, you want to be faithful to God. Because this text is telling us that God is faithful. So if yeah. he told them, I'm going to get you to the promised land, he going to get them to the promised land. Even if it took 40 years, he still got you there. Are you yeah. saying that? Yes. Come on, if it took you 10 years to get off of that addiction, you got off of it. Are you saying I did. that? You Come on, Because he's a what? Faithful, Faithful God. God. Amen. Oh, but let's see if we see the other part of this couple. Let's continue. He said he's a faithful God. Look what he, he's so faithful that Moses says he keeps the what? Covenant. Covenant. And mercy. He says, now yeah. he's going to keep his word. He's going to keep his covenant. He's going to keep his mercy, but he's going to only keep it with a certain group of people. Who are the ones? Yeah. With them that what? Love yeah. him yeah. and keep his commandments yeah. to a yeah. thousand generations. So there it is. We got God as being faithful. Then God got us as loving him. To me, that's a usual couple. I'm going to love yeah. God. God going to love me. He's going to be faithful to me and I'm going to be faithful to him. That's Amen. a usual couple. Are you seeing Amen. this? Yes. Yes. I yeah. am. And, and how long is this going to go on? How long uh, are we going to keep this relationship, love and faith? How long? Thousands of generations. Did you see that? That means right now, you right and me. Now. Yes. That's right. And something. Yes. You and I, we are faithful every week. I, I love these lessons. I love teaching one on one with you ladies because this this is a demonstration of faithfulness. Yeah. Every week I call you right on time. You set your date. You say, okay, Minister Love, I can do Tuesdays at one o'clock. I don't call you at 1253. I don't call you at 110. I call you exactly at one o'clock. And you pick up. You come on to the lesson. Why? Because you're faithful 
and I'm faithful. I'm a Bible mm -hmm. lover. You a Bible lover. And to mm -hmm. me, that's a usual couple. Yes. Woo. Any thoughts on this scripture before we go to the next one? And that's good. <laughs> that's very good. Okay. All right, then. Well, hey, you know, we're going to hang out in Deuteronomy, I do believe, again. And let's, no, I'm sorry, Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 31. Everyone, we're going to go to Psalms chapter 31. And Sister Lasagna is going to read for us. And we encourage you to read too, verse 23. Okay. Oh, love the Lord, all you his saints. For the Lord preserves the faithful and fully repays the proud person. As it relates to song, mm -hmm. five books of songs correspond to the five books of the Pentateuch. The individual songs are often classified according to their content. Didactic Psalms are those which give instruction, Psalms 119. The Messianic Psalms contain prophecy relating to the Messiah, Psalms 22, verses 1 through 31. The imprecatory Psalms involve pleas of God for the punishment of the wicked, Psalms 109, 1 through 29. The penitential psalms express not only the feelings of the repentant heart, but appeal for divine cleansing. Psalms 132, 38, 51, and, 30, and 102. What I wrote about this verse mm -hmm. in Psalms 23, crying out to God is a powerful expression of an unrelenting faith in God. A cry embodies unconditional surrender, a, pre, a plea for mercy from for the almighty God. Love the Lord with passion. The Lord protects and preserves all those who are loyal to him, but he pays back in full all those who reject him in their pride. Ooh. Wow, that was good, wasn't it? So, it was. look, yes, it is. So, here we got this couple still together, don't we? We're seeing that love and faith is right there in the scripture. So, we want to see is this usual? So, what the writer is revealing to us, like you so uh, uh, put uh, Sister Lasagna, he's crying out, isn't he? You know, yeah. sometimes in our lives, despair comes upon us unexpected things come up in our lives and we like, where do I turn? Who do I go to? And first we just got to stop and just cry out unto who? The Lord. Why do we do that? Take a look at the text. I love this. Well, look what I just said. Love, right? Yes, I yeah. just love my last name too. Hallelujah, minister love. Look what the scripture says. Look what he says. He says, oh, love the Lord. Who? All you, all you, his saints. So who are the saints today? You and I. Yes. Uh, 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 what are we supposed to do? Love the Lord. Well, Amen. And then he says, for the Lord, look what the Lord does for those that love him. He preserves the what? Faithful. So not only are we loving the Lord, but we're also what? Faithful yes. at the same time. You can't yes. separate them. You cannot divorce this couple. They belong together. If you're going to yes. have faith in God, then that means you're going to have to love God too. Too many of us want to say, I love God, but you ain't got no faith. The Bible says well, without faith, it's, it, it is impossible to ooh. please God. Come on now. You yes. need faith and you need love. That yeah. is a usual what? Couple. Yeah. When yeah. you're dealing with God. But if yeah. you're giving your love and you're faithful to the enemy, you're lying, you're stealing, you're deceiving, you know, you're, 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 you're figuring out a way to con people. Your love and faith is towards the enemy. 
towards uh, destruction, towards corruption. Yeah, you love and got faith towards that. That ain't that ain't where it should be. It should be just like the scripture tell us you need to love the Lord because he's going to preserve you. He's going to preserve your faithfulness. Look at us today, Sister Lasagna. We've been doing this together. I think you and I are now like in our sixth or seventh year. That's faithfulness. Yeah. That's faithfulness. Look at your marriage. Look how long you probably been married over 30 years. That is what? Faithfulness yeah. and love. You ain't going to be with your husband that longer. He ain't going to be with you that longer. There ain't no love and faith in it. Yeah. Are you seeing this? Yes. Ruby. Oh, but look at the second part of that text. So this second part, that last part of verse 23, this is a whole different group of people. This, this ain't the people that's loving God and faithful to God. No, these are the ones that are opposite. These are the ones that don't love God, that don't have faith in God. And God says, you know what? I'm going to reward the proud doer. Oh, you're going to get your reward, but it ain't going to be like my reward and Sister Lasagna's reward and your reward audience. They're going to get a whole different reward. Matter of fact, the proud doer, his reward is since he loves himself and has faith in his own self, his reward is shame. He's mm -hmm. going to get shamed right before the whole wide world. Everybody mm -hmm. going to see your email, your texts. Your, they're going to hear your phone calls. They're going to see your schemes, your scams, your cons. And th that's your reward proud doer because you refuse to love the Lord and be faithful to the almighty mm -hmm. God. Are you seeing yeah. this, Sister Lasagna? Yes, I am. Woo! So if it worked for David, it ought to work for us today. Love That's the right. Lord and be faithful. Yeah. All right, then. Let's take a look at another scripture. Matter of fact, we're going to hang out in Psalms one more time. Go with me and audience with Sister Lasagna. Let's take a look at Psalms chapter 92. Okay, Psalms 92. Okay. And we're gonna, okay, and we're gonna have you to read verse one and two. Do one and two. It is good to give thanks to the Lord and to sing praises to your, your name, O oh, Most High. To declare your loving kindness in the morning and your faithfulness every night. Mm -hmm. And as it relates to this verse, God has shown his loving kindness in Christ when he was revealed to us. It is good to praise the Lord and to make music proclaiming his love in the morning. And in his, in his faithfulness at night. How great is his works and how profound is his thoughts. Amen. 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 That is good, Sister Lasagna. So you were saying here that God has shown through Christ uh, and, and how we could see this and how uh, making music, you know, and how great. His works are. And that is so true. So here in this scripture, I'm loving this because, again, we're looking for the key words, love and faith or faith and love. Right. So I like this because what the psalmist is doing here. Uh, and this is why I had to read verse one as well. Did you notice what we have a responsibility to do? Did you notice what the writer says? He said it is a good thing for you and I to do what? What should Lasagna yeah. and Carol and everyone else do that's been having this faith in God, that's been loving God? What should we do? Give thanks. Yeah, thanks. Give thanks. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yes. Give thanks to the Lord. And what are we going to do? We're going to sing praises. Now, I, it may not be the singing like you may hear some of these famous gospel singers, you know, like the Clark sisters. I can't sing like them. But I sure can sing uh, to the Lord when I teach the lessons. I sure can sing. When I, ooh, come on now. See, that's singing when you're teaching and preaching. It's singing when you're learning and knowing something and understanding and getting wisdom. That's singing. Because yes. you got that. Oh, are you singing that? Woo! And, and 
And I love what the writer did here. I love what David is doing here in the text. So now after, after we done gave thanks to the Lord, did you see what David revealed about God himself? Because this ain't us in verse two. This is God. David is re revealing God. Look what he says. He says to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning. David is talking about God's loving kindness. He said, you're going to show us your loving kindness when? In the morning. morning. So you mean to tell me when I wake up in the morning and that sun is shining, man, and I'm like, woo, it's going to be a good day. Yeah. That's God's loving kindness, baby. Oh, in the morning time. Oh, but David ain't done yet. He said, well, wait a minute. You know, there's another part to this couple. He said, now we don't see God's faithfulness, but let me tell you about his, his, uh, we just seen the loving kindness, but let's see the faithfulness. He said, you know what? Now I'm going to give you my love in the morning, but I'm going to give you my faith at night. What? So when I lay down at night, when I lay down at night, God said, my faithfulness, my faithfulness is coming to you every night. Wow. That's something people got to get. Faith and love. And this is God's faith and love. And we've yeah. already seen our faith and love when we read it in Deuteronomy. And yeah. now we're seeing God's faith and love. That's a usual couple. Yeah, they belong together every yeah. morning, every night. You can't beat that. Awesome, isn't it? It's wonderful. Isn't it? Sister Lasagna, yeah. anything you want to add to that? No, that's good. I love okay. it. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the next scripture. Let's go over to, now we're going to hang out in the New Testament. And let's see if this couple is still together. Is there anything that can divorce this couple? Is there anything that can separate them? Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13. I believe when I asked you to describe love, you was in 1 Corinthians 13. But we're going to take a look at verse 13. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of all these is love. Mm -hmm. Now, what I wrote about Corinthians, the Corinth was a strategic center of influence for the gospel since those travelers, travelers who heard the gospel there could carry it to all parts of the world. It was the one of the wickedest cities of ancient times, immorality, unscrupulous business dealings, and pagan practices abound. Mm -hmm. So it was really wicked there. Mm -hmm. And what I wrote about this verse 13, love, love is mentioned 360 to 550 times in the Bible, depending on which translation you read. That is a lot of love. Mm -hmm. God is the pure image of love. His love poured out and lavished upon us. God's love is proven by the attention he gives to every single detail of our lives. Faith will be replaced by a clear knowledge of divinity of God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Hope will be replaced by happiness in God. Mm, amen. That is awesome. I like how you, I think you said 330 times love is Three, mentioned. 360 to 550. Oh, wow. That's a, That's lot, a lot of love. love. <laughs> no one is usual because it's usual. <laughs> Love is yeah. usual. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. But Sister Lasagna, according to this scripture here, and thank you for the backdrop of Corinthians, it sure was one of the most wicked cities during those times. It was a well-traveled city, as you mentioned. So a lot of merchants was coming through that city. And so people was getting the gospel message. And Amen. so what I like about this, this is Paul. And if you had an opportunity to read, uh, 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 this chapter, 
you will start around about verse 11, from 11 to 13. Paul is describing uh, his maturity. He said, uh, when I was a child, I thought as a yeah. child. And then Paul yeah. went on, he says, he's, he said, but you know, I put away those childish things. things. Because see, you yeah. know, when we are a child, we can love and have faith at the wrong thing. Something yeah. that looked good. Oh, come on now. Oh, that was good right there. Something to a child that may uh, seem good to a child isn't. And we got our love and faith in the wrong thing. So Paul said, I've grown up now. I'm mature now. And he yeah. says, I, he says, um, he says, I realize now, came to the conclusion, now abides what? Faith. Did you notice he said faith? He put faith number one, didn't he? And yeah. then he says, Hope. So he got hope there in the middle, like it's a sandwich, you know. But what what makes up this sandwich? What's the other end? Love. Love. So you got faith as one slice of bread. Hope is the meat and love is the other slice of bread, kind of like a sandwich uh, picture that mm -hmm. we're looking at. And but he said the greatest of all of all of these three uh, 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 put together, it is what? Love. Love is the greatest, but it's not, it's not saying that you don't need faith. It's not saying you don't need hope. You do need those two, but love is the greatest of all three. So you got to have all three in order for this, for this to work. Amen. Right. So, Amen. so even, even Paul knew something about this couple. Paul knew something about being faithful. Look at Paul. When he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, he turned his whole life around. He mm. began to preach and teach. When you talked about the uh, the word, the gospel coming to uh, Corinth, who do you think brought that? It was Paul. Uh -huh. It was yeah. Paul doing that all because he loved the gospel message. He loved when he met Jesus and he finally got the truth. He wasn't being lied to by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He wasn't being lied to by the religious uh, folks uh, that's in charge to keep the people underneath them. Paul got mm -hmm. free and he and he he had love for the gospel. He had hope that people would hear the message and 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 he had faith in the gospel message. So Paul had all three characteristics, all yeah. spirits. See? So again, even in the Old Testament, you cannot divorce the couple. We even down in the New Testament and the couple is still together. Yeah. Love and faith. Faith and love. They are a usual couple. When it's yeah. directed towards God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. And in yeah. all the word of God. You got to love your Bible. That's why we're Bible lovers. Yeah. Achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. I love it because I got faith in it. Right. I got faith in it because I love it. See? That's right. All right. Anything else you want to add on that scripture? Not, not yet. All right, then. Well, I know we're going to get your closing comments, so let's move on. Let's go to Ephesians, please. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 1. And we're going to have you to read verse 15, please. Matter of fact, 15 and 16. We could do that. Okay. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love, for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers. Now, Paul seeks to remind the Ephesian church that a complete understanding of Christ leads to a greater love and stronger faith. If our faith does not make us more loving, there is something wrong with our faith. This means we love the unlovable. Mm. And that's all I have. All right. Love the unlovable. That woo, to a lot of people, that's hard to do, isn't it? But yes. if you but if you practice it over your years, it will become easy to love yes. those that hate Amen. you. Amen. Amen. 
So here we have, we're still in the New Testament. And again, we got Paul now talking to the believers in Ephesus. We just yeah. saw him over there in Corinth. Now he's moving on down the Mediterranean. He's now in Ephesus. And so now Paul is saying to these, uh, to these uh, new believers, take a look at verse 15. He says, therefore, I also, I love this. He says, after I heard of your what? Faith. Faith. Wait a minute. Let's stop right there. Have you ever just wondered if people know about your reputation? Have you ever just known people to say, I heard of uh, Minister Love. Uh, I, I heard about lasagna. I heard that, man, she'd be on that Bible study every Tuesday. She'd be faithful. I heard that. I heard of your faith, Minister Love, that you've been teaching these lessons since 2010. You got called in 2006. I heard of your faith in who? The Lord. See, don't get it mixed up. You got to know where your who your faith is directed to. Right. So remember what we said earlier. There's two entities. You either gonna be faithful towards God or you're gonna be faith and have love towards the enemy. So Paul said, I heard about your faith in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because he had preached the message to them and they believed it and they believed it and they believed it. And so Paul was hearing about it because they was going out spreading the gospel, too. So that yeah. made Paul feel so good. He was happy that his students, that the people he preached to this good message, they was getting it. And then I love what he says. Paul says, not only have I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus but he says, and your what? Love. So there's that love. There's that couple. Now you're loving the saints. Uh, like you were just saying there, you know, some people are hard to love. But, you know, if you practice, you can love. You can do it. If you got faith in the Lord Jesus, now mm -hmm. that brings your love. You can love those that despise you. You can love those that persecute you. Yes, you can. You can love them when you know who you got faith in. Yeah. The Lord. Wow. I think that is so awesome. So what is people? So what are people hearing about us? Do they hear that we got love and faith? Is that what they're hearing? When your name come up on social media, when your name come up in other people's houses in their tongue, because you know people talk about you. People gonna mm -hmm. talk about you. That's because we talk about them. If I'm talking about them, they talking about me. But the thing is, what are you talking about? Exactly. What are you talking about? Are you talking about their love and faith that they have and being a Bible lover, achieving Christ's knowledge, understanding the wisdom? Or are you yeah. talking about trying to trying to get them out of it, out of the love of God? Are you are you talking trying to bring them down? I don't know why you're studying that Bible. I don't know why you got faith. In Jesus Christ, I don't know why you love what you love. Oh, if you knew, you'd be in this book too. If you knew what we knew, you would be having faith and love because the scriptures is telling us your faith and love is to be towards who? The Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And in the Old Testament, it said you better love the Lord your God. See? And have faith in him. Because God and Jesus and the Holy Ghost, they got love and faith in who? Us. Who else they going to give it to? Who else they going to look to give that faith and love to? They got to have somebody. Why not you and me? Amen. Woo we Praise the Lord. All right, then. I believe we got one more scripture. Let's go to Philemon chapter one. Chapter one. And we're going to have you to read for us verse four and five, please. I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus and toward all the saints. You know what? Go on and read verse uh, six. I just saw something. Read verse six, too. I sure will. Okay. that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of the every good thing which is in you in Jesus Christ. Ooh, that just, that's what we call a cherry on top. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, that's a little no, gold nugget. 
Uh, so share with us, Lasagna, what you got out of this scripture. Okay. The epistle in Philemon was a private letter written by Paul during his first imprisonment in Rome, A.D. 62. The focus of this letter is to give a proper understanding of the Hebrew fugitive law found in Deuteronomy 23, 15, and 16. It reveals how Paul acted in strict accordance with the requirements of the law dealing with Os Osimus, uh, one, Os uh, Anisimus. Anisimus. Thank you. I like the way you <laughs> pronounce it. <laughs> Onesimus. He was a slave who had run away from Philemon. Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about him. But faith in the heart is confessed by the mouth. And love, both in Christ and his people, shows itself as well as faith in the works of righteousness. That's all I have. All right. Praise the Lord. So like you were saying, that faith is in the what? Heart and love in Christ and in the people. So let's take a look at this scripture here. If you had the opportunity to read this uh, this uh, passage and to know what's going on, as you mentioned, we're in the book of Philemon. And Philemon was a follower of Paul. He had been under Paul's teaching. And so he's there, you know, he's teaching, he's learning the gospel, he's sharing the gospel, he's building up himself and sharing it with others. But Philemon had a slave and his name was Onesimus. And Onesimus yeah. ran away from Philemon. And I've always wondered why, what was the reason? It doesn't give us detail. And it really, this, this, it just really, you know, got me curious. And so when I looked at this text, let's go back up to verse four. This is very interesting. Look what Paul is saying to Philemon. Look what he's saying about Philemon. He says, I thank my God make a mention of you. Who's the you, Philemon? Amen. He says, I make mention of you always in my prayers. Let's stop right there. Can you imagine if I were to talk to you and I said, ooh, listen, girl, I make, I thank my God because I make mention of you always in my prayers. I wonder why. Why would Paul say that, that he mentions uh, Philemon to God every time he pray? Take a look at verse five. This is why. Paul says, because hearing of your what? Mm. Love and mm. faith. faith. There's that couple. There's love and faith together again. And who now has this couple in their life? Philemon. Mm. Philemon. Paul is letting him know, I heard of your love and faith, which you have towards who? The Lord Jesus. So there's Philemon. I mean, uh, yeah, Philemon. He's now, uh, uh, Paul is showing us that he's a witness to this faith and love towards Jesus because Paul has faith and love towards Jesus. So if Paul is out there recruiting people. Don't you think they ought to be like Paul? And so not only did Philemon have this love and faith towards the Lord Jesus, like you and I ought to have, he said, but he also extended it. He even let that love go towards who? All the saints. Ain't that what we just saw in the last scripture? You know, some yeah. people are unlovable, but when you get the Lord in you, you can now have that person lovable. Wow. Look at that. So here is Philemon, who people rarely know anything about. Little short book in the Bible. But he he knew about this couple. He knew about this couple. But what got me was if he was so full of love and faith towards Jesus and to all the saints, why did Onesimus run away? What, what, what made Onesimus run away from Philemon? If Philemon had all this love and faith towards Jesus and all the saints, wonder what did he do? 
it just goes to show you that even in this world, since Jesus haven't come back yet, there are still some imperfection. I don't yeah. care if you at the top of the top of the the chain line of a church organization. You could be the preacher, prophet, pastor, musician, but there is something about us that can cause people to want to run away. But he ran, but look where Onesimus ran to. He ran to who? Paul. Yeah. And Paul was able to talk to Onesimus and get him, uh, you know, to look at the matter you know, in a different perspective. And he was able to encourage him to go back to Philemon. And Paul wrote that letter to Philemon and encouraging him to receive Onesimus, Onesimus back into the yeah. church fold, so to speak. See? Yeah. Yeah. Love and faith. Sometimes that love and faith, it can be strong. And you're like, why are they, why are they making me do this? Why is she making me, you know, uh, take out the garbage and wash the dishes? And, you know, some people, they don't like structure, so they run away. Yeah. They don't like structure. Until you show them you need some structure. Now go back home and listen to your mom and your daddy and do what they tell you to do. Love and faith. Amen. All right, then, Sister Lasagna, that's going to conclude our lesson here for today on episode number 28, where we talked about this couple called Faith and Love. Why don't you share with us what did you learn on this lesson today, please? Well, I learned what brought to mind what, what came up for me. You know, the greatest command that Jesus gave was to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, and soul, and love thy neighbor as myself, which is two of the greatest commands we should listen to. And they birth, both begin with love. And it covers all. If you love your neighbor, you loving God first with everything you have, and you love your neighbor, that covers everyone. It covers the people in the church, if I go to school, wherever I am. You know, yesterday I was at the gym trying to perform some exercise and I made myself a little space for me only so I can get it done. And a woman and her kids came to my space. They were already in the pool, taking up the whole pool, which I was fine with that. But now they want to come into my space. I said, oh, excuse me, do you mind if I have this little space? And I'm saying it out of love because I, I don't want to be mean. I just want to get along. Mm -hmm. And she said, this is a public pool and we can go wherever we want. That's not the response I wanted. Right. So I said, you know, I'll just call the manager and let him handle it. But before I called him. She wiped her kids off and got out. And she didn't have to. But see how people respond? Mm -hmm. Even though you do things out of love. And I was just trying to love on one girl. You know, let's get along. We both pay for this pool. Right. You can have some. I can have some. Mm -hmm. But I'll only be here for a moment and you can have the whole thing again. Right. So give me my space. Some people don't know how to love and don't know what love is. Mm -hmm. You know, even though you talk to them out of love and you present yourself in love, that's not what you get. But you have to hold your tongue, hold your temper, because it shows them there's another way to be. And that's what the Lord is showing me today, mm -hmm. that I can treat people differently. I don't have to blow up. I can... Rejoice in your spirit, in your your happiness. I'm just grateful. You know, my sister called today and she kept telling me, she said she was going to have an engagement party and I'm welcome to come. And I kept saying, well, where is it? But her phone kept going out. So she and she's a, a Christian. She hollered at me. I told you three times. I say, sweetie, but your phone is going out. So I didn't ever hear it. 
She said, Anya, Anya. I said, okay, I would like to come. If you right. send me the address and the time, I'll ask my husband and see if we can be there. It's how you talk to people. Right. She calmed down. Mm -hmm. See, her, her, her spirit went up here and then it came back down. Right. So we don't have to act or respond to people as they do. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really growing as a Christian. Yeah. I love where I've become, but I'm not through yet. That's I right. have a long way to go. That's and I, I'm, I'm enjoying the journey, yes. the walk. I might eat. <laughs> what would Paul say? I might eat little food, but I'm growing into mature things. <laughs> so I want to be a mature Christian. Yes. So I can have the answers when people come to me for for solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all I have, Miss mm -hmm. Love. Well, it was so awesome, Sister Lasagna. Thank you so much for sharing uh, your even personal experience with family members on how to respond. See, just like we was talking about Onesimus and Philemon. But what yeah. what did uh, what did uh, Philemon do to make Onesimus run away? Is it because uh, was his love and faith too stern? How was it? So it's how we respond, isn't it? And so yeah. we got to have the art of communication. Yeah. And so you kept your tone low because see, if we rise, raise our tone and they already shouting and screaming and stuff, yeah. well, if I match them, now we both looking like a fool. Exactly. So somebody got to have what? Love and faith and stay calm. Well, all right there. Well, God bless you again, Sister Lasagna, for being with, with me here on today. But before we leave, I want to remind everyone that you can go to our website called MyBibleRegistration.com and you can also go there and get lesson number 28 for this year's uh, teaching series that we're doing Fisher Men of Men. Oh my goodness. This week, we're looking at the leprous man. That's why right. we called us a leprous man type of a fish today. And there is a fish called the ulcer fish. And you know what mm -hmm. ulcers are? They got holes. They look, you know, look like holes. And that's what leprosy is. So you want to join us and watch that episode right there at MyBibleRegistration.com. And then also uh, to everyone, we want to remind you that we got a YouTube channel. That's right. We're hoping and praying that you will become a subscriber to our YouTube channel on this year. It's called the Sister Love Talk Show. There we will talk about anything you want to talk about. You want to talk about politics? You want to talk about your pets? You want to talk about relationships? You don't even want to talk about your social media? Well, whatever you want to talk about, just send me an email at faithandlove2 at mm. yahoo.com and you can be a guest on the Sister Love Talk Show. God bless you all. I'm here with uh, Sister Lasagna, and uh, we were just looking forward to another great lesson uh, here with you on next week. And so I am just so awesome uh, to be your teacher, and you're my student, Sister Lasagna, and God bless you in all that you do for this week. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right, then, everyone. So Tune in next week. You don't want to miss uh, Sister Lil Sonya and I as we're going to go through another couple. Not going to tell you what the who the couple is. Just tune in. You're going to be surprised. Mm -hmm. God bless. Take care. I'm Minister Love. And goodbye. Goodbye.